My name is Mark Chestnut, and I'm a travel writer, a content specialist, and the author of a brand new book called Prepare for Departure, a notes on a single mother, a misfit son, inevitable mortality, and the enduring allure of frequent flyer miles. But today, we're actually here to talk about something that's even more important for all of you, of course. Basically, how to maximize your profits with the LGBTQ travel segment. Just to give you a quick overview of what we're going to discuss today, we'll be talking about what's in it for you with this market. And the market, of course, is worth more than $215 billion in consumer spending every year. So it's quite an impressive number. With this presentation, I aim to give you some valuable insight that you all can use that can help you regardless of whether you have decades of experience with this market or whether you're just starting out. And if you're just starting out, I think it's important to uh, make one quick note that may seem obvious to some of you, but still, if you're starting out, you should know this. You do not need to be a member of the LGBTQ community in order to succeed and thrive with this, with this market segment. What do you need? Well, some pretty basic and obvious things. You need the usual market savvy that I'm sure you all have already, and the willingness to learn and to stay on top of travel trends for this segment, and of course, the ability to empathize and understand what LGBTQ travelers want, what they look for, and what they need when they travel. So you can master this market. It just takes some dedication like any other segment. So with that in mind, we're going to be covering how LGBTQ travelers have evolved and how they're re rebounding since the pandemic started. We're going to talk about how suppliers have changed the way that they're approaching the LGBTQ market and how you can too. And we're going to talk about the many different types of LGBTQ travelers within the LGBTQ plus community and help you to determine which ones might be a good fit for you. But first, we're going to take a quick step back to the old days. To gay travel in the old days. Well, this is what gay travel used to look like, at least in my world, because this is me when I was about five, four years old, maybe, um, with my sister holding my beautiful, stylish Max, Matchbox car case, and uh, and my uncle, and we're at the Louisville Stan Stanford Field Airport, waiting to board an American Airlines flight to some glamorous destination, most likely Rochester, New York, or Paducah, Kentucky. Don't be jealous with the way I live my life, please. <laughs> Um, but at any rate, seriously, gay travel is what people used to call this, and it was a very limited view, and suppliers and the industry didn't really understand or know much about what was then called gay travel. Um, but the good news is that things have changed, and it is no longer just called gay travel. LGBTQ plus travel is the mo most common terminology, but the world is different, and that's a wonderful thing, because suppliers, tourism organizations, and travel advisors are paying attention to LGBTQ customers like never before. And you see a few rainbow-hued examples here, American Airlines, Marriott International, Hyatt, Celebrity Cruises, or just a few of the suppliers that are addressing this market and doing a great job at it. And the media, of course, are doing a better job than ever at providing you with the news information that you need to succeed in the market. I've included some specific examples here for personal reasons, really, because I write regularly for Travel Weekly and Travel Age West, which you may know, some of the leading uh, media outlets for, for savvy travel advisors. And of course, I also have my own little travel blog called latinflyer.com, which focuses on travel to, uh, to Latin America. And um, for all of this, I frequently will include LGBTQ angles in my stories because it is an important niche, regardless of what your main area of specialty may be. <laughs> and of course, the connection between LGBTQ, L sometimes I have trouble with the term, I should know it by now. <laughs> so that's why I say it so slowly. Um, and the connection between LGBTQ people and travel is one of the underlying themes in my book, Prepare for Departure. So long story short, We've moved forward in a lot of ways, and that's a really, really nice thing. But why should you care about this market? The fact that you all are here probably means that you all have a good idea about why you should care about this market, but let's just go over a few of the, the main selling points, really. Spending power is one of them. As we already mentioned, the LGBTQ community has a, quite a bit of money to spend on travel, and that's very attractive for all of us. The ability to travel is another. According to multiple studies, for example, LGBTQ travelers are more likely to have a passport than the average US traveler. So that means that a lot of them are really willing and able to pick up and to go off and explore the world, and you all can help them do that. 
Another thing worth noting is are the diverse interests of the LGBT community. The LGBTQ market is filled with people who represent diverse age groups and genders and budgets and interests. So that means there are more sales opportunities for you. And we're gonna go into this a little bit more in just a little bit. Another great thing is that the LGBTQ community has proved to rebound relatively quickly following hardships and downturns in the marketplace. Uh, very similar to what a lot of us have been experiencing with the pandemic. In other words, these are people who can make really, really great clients for you, as some of you already know. Speaking of the pandemic though, what have we learned from the pandemic? We're all still talking about the challenges that we face, the challenges we're still facing, and what the new normal is, and the LGBTQ market is no different. We're still kind of reviewing things and finding out what the new normal is. A key few findings, travelers in this segment are more likely to be resilient than some other markets and to return to travel in a bigger way. They're kind of making up for lost time. In addition, their tastes continue to evolve, and we don't really know what the new normal may be yet for the market. It will likely be different, broader, and even more diverse than ever before. We may see shifts in things like preferred destinations and preferred suppliers, but one thing is for sure, travel advisors are among the best positioned to monitor and understand and benefit from the LGBTQ market and how it's changing, because you all are the ones who are speaking to real human beings and emailing with real human beings you're asking the right questions of your clients. You're qualifying your clients. You have your finger on the pulse, unlike most people, more than most people do. So you're in a really great position. And of course, this is a time, as the world gets back into traveling again, when travelers need more guidance and may have more questions than they used to have a couple of years ago. So you're all in, in a really good position to thrive with this market. One thing that's important is to show that you're welcome. And um, we're gonna get into some real tips. We have the top five tips to share about how you can, you can master the LGBTQ plus market. But during this presentation, I'm gonna show you a couple really cool examples of how major suppliers and organizations are rolling out their rainbow carpet by being inclusive and showing diversity in their marketing. This might give you some ideas about how you can do the same thing. So to start, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite new inclusive campaigns from a tourism office. This one is from Discover Puerto Rico. And here is one of their commercials, which I absolutely love. It shows the beauty of the island and the rich cultural experiences, but it also shows how it's such a welcoming place for all different kinds of people. And of course, it's especially appropriate that we're watching this now since next year, I hope we'll all see each other in San Juan for, for the Asta Global Convention for 2023. So it's very cool. Um, speaking of creating a welcoming space, let's move on now and start with tip number one. Tip number one for mastering the LGBTQ market is to create the best possible work environment. It all starts at home, or at your home office, perhaps. You may already be familiar with the term DEI, which stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And that has become a touchstone for many forward-thinking businesses and organizations, and it can be for yours too, and maybe it already is. So make sure that your own workplace and poli the policies, the environment, it, they're equitable and fair and respect diversity and inclusion. And once you do, don't be afraid to shout it out. You want to celebrate your diversity, celebrate your commitment to diversity and equality. Because people, consumers, really do love to hear positive stories and they love to give their business to support companies that do good work and represent the, val the values that they represent. Tip number two is to educate yourself about the market. Knowledge is power, of course, no matter what the topic is. And when you'll do much better with the LGBTQ market when you give yourself a solid foundation of education, not only when you're starting out, but also as an ongoing process to keep you in the know and on top of things. Of course, you're already taking a good step by being here right now this morning. But to stay on top of the market, you can also consider attending conferences like IGLTA, the International LGBTQ Travel Association, and Proud Experiences, another organization that hosts LGBTQ tourism events. You can also see what your own consortium and supplier partners offer in the way of education and resources. ASTA, for example, offers a DEI masterclass, and Internova Travel Group has partnered with Proud Experiences. You can also subscribe to LGBTQ newspapers, magazines, blogs, and websites to stay on top of news and trends. And of course, 
I'm sure you already read your trade publications and websites like Travel Age West and Travel Weekly, so there are a lot of resources out there for information. Tip number three, and this is also very important, try to avoid the one-size-fits-all approach to this market. You know, it's so easy to slide into talking about the LGBTQ market as, well, as if it were this one big monolithic group of people who are all the same. In fact, it's almost unavoidable, especially since we're standing here right now and sitting here and talking about how to serve this market. It's easy to overgeneralize. And overgeneralize. But one of the most important things that you can do is to recognize the diversity and the evolving nature of this segment and then adjust your strategy accordingly. The terminology, of course, is important. When I first started writing, we used terms like gay travel or gay and lesbian travel and then LGBT travel. But now, Community Marketing and Insights, they're an organization, a research company focused on this market. They've tracked a total of 23 different identities that people use in their studies of this group. And according to an IGLTA study, LGBTQ millennials are more diverse in their identity selections than older generations, which makes sense. Let's take a, a look at a live example of this diversity. I'm standing here right now in front of you. I'm the specimen. I'm a gay white man in my 50s, whether I like it or not. And, <laughs> but I, I represent just one small niche within the much broader group of LGBTQ plus travelers. So you could sell me one type of vacation, and I'm sure I'd love it. You all are pros, you're experts, you're gonna qualify me and sell me the best possible experience and I'm gonna love it. But there are millions of other LGBTQ travelers out there who are looking for something totally different from what I'm looking for. And so that means more opportunities for you and there are different ways to specialize in this, in this group. So you'll do well when you're able to identify the niches within the market and then figure out which fit your own business model best and your own strategies. So let's take a look at some of those niches. Just like the mainstream market, of course, LGBTQ travelers are an extremely diverse group of people. And like other, LGB, like other niches, LGBTQ travelers have evolved in recent years, partly due to the pandemic in some cases. One interesting thing to note, you don't necessarily to set, need to set up some separate LGBTQ division of your company or try to master every single aspect of this segment in order to do business and succeed with this segment. Some of this may fit in with your own specialties that you already have. If you already focus on niches like family travel or cruise, tra tr cruise travel, for example, the LGBTQ market could be a natural addition to that particular specialization. Destination weddings are, are another example. They're an extremely popular niche everywhere, we know, but for LGBTQ destination weddings, you can use a lot of resources like the website gaydestinationweddings.com. There's a lot out there. A quick look just at that website, for example, shows a variety of friendly properties for this market for, for destination weddings and honeymoons, romance travel, places like the Hard Rock Hotel Riviera Maya and the Royalton Riviera Cancun, to name just a few. Events, of course, also provide a number of great sales opportunities, and Pride Festivals are logically one of the highest profile events uh, to sell around the world, you know, Pride Parades and festivals, things like that. But you can also look at things like film festivals and smaller hotel-specific events. The Hilton Vallarta Riviera, for example, will host a complete LGBTQ uh, buyout for this fall for a Halloween and Day of the Dead celebration, and that's an event created by a vacation operator called Vakaya, which organizes getaways around the globe. And in May of next year, a company called Mr. Gaycation is offering an all-inclusive LGBTQ package at the Barcelo Puerto Vallarta. But all of this is really just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, look at this list, it's huge. I recently interviewed a travel advisor who says that last minute travel, luxury travel, and adventure travel, as well as destination weddings and honeymoons, are among the most in-demand vacation types for this particular segment. But you can see even more sales opportunities in this list right here, and you may see some of your own favorite types of, of specializations peeking out in this list. So those are the kinds of things that maybe you want to focus on the most. So we'll move on to tip number four though, getting your message out there. But there are lots of ways to show your savvy to potential travelers within the LGBTQ segment. Um, I've listed several channels and platforms that you can use right here, starting with some of the more traditional things like magazines, newspapers, and websites. 
You could get your word out through local media and other organizations. You can use a two-pronged approach that could include paid advertising and sponsorships as well as regular editorial media coverage, which could include reports, news reports, and interviews, for example. Now, you may be wondering, how important or is it really important for you to advertise or be present in LGBTQ-specific media? Well, according to a recent IGLTA survey, an impressive 72% of respondents were significantly more or somewhat more likely to make a purchase when a product or service is advertised in the LGBTQ media. So do you, must you do that? No, but it's something worth considering. You might see what, want to see what your options are out there. So when you're paying for an ad, of course, you're guaranteed it's gonna run. You're gonna have a presence in that media. But how do you get included in the media from an editorial side? You know, the free stuff. We call it earned media because it means that you're you're earning your ability to appear in the media. Well, as a member of the media, I can tell you that there are some things that we tend to look for as reporters or as editors. We're always looking for knowledgeable sources for interviews and insight, for example, especially in the travel trade industry, but also in consumer too. And there, here are some of the other things that tend to catch the eye of reporters and bloggers and, and editors as well. Hot trends, useful information, reliable ex experts, um, cool visuals and offbeat stories, you know, things that will capture the attention of our readers are important, and shareable moments, unique experiences. Um, you know, social media, of course, if that's part of your strategy, and it probably should be, um, can also provide an ideal platform for sharing your inclusive message. But whatever the platform, you need to know what resonates with a particular audience that you're going after. So whatever segment of the LGBTQ segment, you need to know which is, which is the best channel to reach them and what might resonate with them the most. These are, according to the website Muckrack, these are the top LGBTQ media outlets when measured just in terms of visits. These include several different types of platforms, which is interesting to know. Channel Q, for example, is radio. And Queerty is a website. Out Magazine and The Advocate, meanwhile, they are print magazines that have been around for quite a while, and they also have companion websites. But you don't need to think that any of these need to necessarily be on your must-have list. Advertising in some of these top media outlets can be pricey, and also catching the eye of one of the editors or reporters might be difficult. You could also research your own local publications in the area where you're based, or websites and blogs and influencers who might specialize in the same types of things that you specialize in. So you need to start kind of building your own media contact list little by little. You can send them news, open up the channels of communication. If you do press releases or newsletters, consider sending those to them. Um, start a relationship, offer yourself as an interview so resource, and start a conversation to get your message out for this market. Making connections, of course, is, is important for all of us, no matter what your specialization. And another great way to build awareness about your expertise and expand your potential client base is to make connections via LGBTQ clubs, organizations, and businesses. I've listed a few major fundraising and nonprofit organizations here as an example, and they might be something that you'd want to consider. You can also look into nonprofits in your own hometown, in your own city. You can also collaborate with LGBTQ-owned and friendly businesses like bars and restaurants and bookshops. You could host co-host special events and presentations, travel theme nights. So there are a lot of fun possibilities out there. And of course, don't forget your own professional organizations can provide great ways to network and build business and awareness as well. Finding the right partners in this business, of course, is also very important. Connecting with suppliers and other partners who are LGBTQ friendly and savvy is really crucial for success. You don't want to be referring your business for LGBT clients to a company that doesn't understand them or it may actually be discriminatory in some way that you don't realize it. But how do you find the right partners? Well, if you're a member of a consortium, that might be a good place to start, of course. Paying attention to the media, reading the trades, and reading the LGBTQ media and consumer media as well. That can help too because you'll see who's present both in advertising and in editorial coverage. But you can also look for things like certification and other recognition that shows a company's commitment to diversity. Remember how I said that you need to make your own business equitable and committed to diversity start at home? Well, you can and should do the same thing when you're looking at suppliers. So here are some of the certifications that you can look for. We have TAG approved, Queer Destinations, and Gay Travel approved. These are just some certifications that some businesses may carry, and they indicate either that they've gone through extensive training, 
or that they're in some other way they've demonstrated their commitment to the market. TAG, for example, they evaluate hotels based on their employment policies, services, and general support for the community. You can also look for progressive corporate policies and diversity awards, like the Human Rights Campaign's Corporate Equality Index, which ranks employers. Among the organizations that score particularly well with, with them are international hotel companies like Hilton and Marriott International. Both of them have corporate non-discrimination policies, of course, and they're also members of the IGLTA. Booking hotels like these that follow progressive corporate guidelines is one way to ensure a more consistent standard of service for your clients and more equal treatment regardless of the destination. And speaking of destinations, Let's take another look at another list and with uh, the top LGBTQ vacation destinations in the United States. But then a after we take a look at the list, I'm going to ask you to partially forget, forget it, that you forget that you've seen it, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Now this list is from a CMI survey, and you can see that New York City, Chicago, and Las Vegas rank the highest. But according to a recent survey by Vacation Renter, travelers currently consider San Francisco, where we are right now, New York City, and Los Angeles as the top three LGBTQ-friendly cities in the United States. So you'll always find slightly different rankings, slightly different results, depending on which survey it is, when it took place, and who was surveyed. So that's why you need to kind of keep, a, keep an open mind. And I'm telling you to partially forget these listings, also, because I don't want you to limit yourself to just the top most obvious choices. Because, after all, LGBTQ travelers are a diverse group of people, and destinations of every size can fit their tastes. Cities like Louisville, Kentucky, for example, and I'm not just bringing that up again because I was standing there with my Matchbox car case when I was five years old, but Louisville, Kentucky is an example of another destination that's smaller and may not be one of the first things that pops into your mind, but they've pulled out the stops to show how friendly they are with this market. They've advertised heavily in LGBTQ media like Passport Magazine, which is the, the biggest LGBTQ travel magazine in the United States, and Desti Destination Louisville, in fact, recently participated in a webinar called Creating a More Inclusive Travel Experience, hosted by the U.S. Travel Association. So how do you find these other lesser known destinations to sell? Well, of course, you can ask your clients, you can ask your friends and family, and of course, again, read the media. You know, whether you're following you know, websites or blogs, social media, or the trade journals, you know, there's a lot of ways to, to find out things that you might be able to sell, destinations that could interest your clients that are way off of, from this list. But whatever the destination you're selling, remember that above all, LGBTQ, tra LGBTQ travelers need to feel safe, they want to feel comfortable, and they want to feel welcome. We'll go international now and take a look at the top international destinations, also according to the same CMI survey. It's no surprise that Canada and Mexico rank especially well since they're so close by. And we can also find some additional insight from the survey by Vacation Renter, which last year found that travelers considered the Netherlands, Canada, and the United Kingdom as the safest international destinations for LGBTQ solo travel. And of course, there's always good news about new hotels and destinations that are making greater efforts in the marketplace. Queer Destination, for example, recently, surveyed, or recently certified several hotels in Mexico, including the Thompson Playa del Carmen, the Hard Rock Hotel Los Cabos, and Mundo Imperial, which now builds itself as the first Mexico-based hotel chain to receive the committed entity certification. The destination of Los Cabos, by the way, speaking of them, also recently cert received certification from Queer Destinations. And LGBTQ tourism in Los Cabos, in fact, now makes up an impressive 16% of the total number of visitors every year. That's according to statistics from the Los Cabos Tourism Board. The number of friendly destinations continues to expand, so you should always keep your eyes open for the next hot destination and always look beyond the top of the list that you might see here. And to that end, I'd like to share a recent quote from Brian King, who is the president of Marriott International's Caribbean and Latin America operations. Here's what he's saying about how things are changing. While the Caribbean and Mexico continue to be top travel destinations, I'm particularly excited to see the expanding embrace of the LGBTQ plus community throughout other parts of Central and South America, he said. We expect to see an increased level of interest for Argentina, Uruguay, Brazil, Colombia, and parts of Chile. 
where gay, queer, and trans travelers will find thriving communities and plenty to explore. So in other words, the list is growing and the list is diversifying, and that is really good news for travelers and for travel advisors. Now, before we open this up to discussion and questions, I just want to remind you if, you, if you haven't been reminded enough already, of the value that you all provide to the travel community and to travelers, and especially to LGBTQ travelers. You, the role that you play can be so important in the lives of LGBTQ travelers, and I can say, say that as an LGBTQ traveler myself, because you all have your finger on the pulse, you know what's going on, and you know how to connect travelers with the best possible experiences. To drive this home, I'm bringing up yet another quote. This one is from Gavin Miller, who is the Executive Vice President of Travel Edge. During a recent interview I did with him, he told me this. As the demand for the human expertise of a travel designer has increased over the last two years, LGBTQ plus travelers are finding added expertise and security when working with a true travel expert who understands the needs and dreams of the client. LGBTQ plus travelers are often looking for travel experiences that are not one size fits all. With a travel expert on their side, LGBTQ plus travelers can unlock hidden perks, special amenities, signature welcome cocktails, LGBTQ plus safe spaces, and so much more. And I think a welcome cocktail sounds really good right now because I think it's almost 12 noon here, right? Well, it's 12 noon back in New York where I'm flying tomorrow, so I think it's not too late. But at any rate, with that, I'd like to share my um, contact information with you. I'd love to open the floor here, and I'd like to start with a question for you all, and then if you all have questions, we can kind of go back and forth. For those of you who have been in this, in this market for a little while, especially over the past couple of years, what kind of evolution have you been seeing in the LGBTQ travel market? I've yes. seen a lot of singles that are looking to be Interesting. And do you think, has that hap been happening more since the pandemic started? Then? I think so, I think so. And, wow. And older, like in their 50s. Right, right. Yeah. And so, and so the singles then, what, are, what kind of travel, what kind of travel are they looking for when they're booking, would you say? Uh, they're wanting, you know, situations where they can meet other like-minded people and whether it be cruise or Mexico, that kind of thing. They're a little bit nervous and they're nervous travelers, so they kind of looking for more group things, and so that would be something I'd like to know more about. Are there actual companies that focus on, you know, putting together those kind of trips for, for like singles? For singles, stuff? right, right. Yeah. Right, because they're looking for like a safe, comfortable, like right. group experience as opposed to just doing a solo trip to yeah, Europe or Asia. Or somebody. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's a very good point, yeah, um, about the, the, popular, the growing popularity of, of, of single travel in the LGBTQ market. And yeah, um, like for example, the ones, the examples that I mentioned um, in Mexico, there, there are some like full hotel buyouts that can be, that can be very good for, for a single traveler and for different age groups too. You know, some of them might be more youth oriented, like 20 somethings, others might be more, you know, middle aged and 40s and 50s. So yeah, the good thing is there are a lot of options and there's a growing number of options there, like with a hotel buyout or also cruises, like you said, there are, are full ship buyouts, but then there's also a lot of cruise ships now, obviously will have like the social mixers and things like that for LGBTQ travelers. So there are some, some good options out there. So um, when there's like a hotel buyout, that kind of thing, is that something we can book into? Yes, okay. yeah. For example, like the, the ones that Vakaya um, offers, they have hotel buyouts. And there's the one that, with them that's coming up this fall in, um, in Mexico, in Puerto Vallarta. And then also there's the one with Mr. Gaycation in May of next year, which is in Mexico. Either way, whether it's a full buyout or it's just a partial, at least you know that they'll be with groups and so they'll be you know, structured socializing and things like that. So it can be a good way for people to, to meet other people. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Okay, any other comments? Yes. That's great, that's great. And so, in terms of making it easier and smoother, is it the hotels, like their wedding planning departments that are helping to, to yes. smooth that through? Yes, wedding planning departments or getting a minister to perform the ceremony. 
ceremony, um, whether it's symbolic or, 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 or legal, you know, the, the whole process now from soup to nuts is much easier. So now I can do a lot more than, you know, spending like a whole month just trying to get <laughs> Right. You know, to put one together, now I can do it in like two days. That's amazing, isn't that incredible? That's really That's good. Amazing. That's nice. And are there certain destinations or certain hotels that you're finding most popular with your LGBTQ clients for, for that, for weddings? I mean, Mexico is the, the main um, the destination now, and um, pretty much all the hotels in Mexico, it's like, you know, it's, it's good, you know, but you can just take your choice with regards to your client's budget, how much, you know, they want to spend, or most of the time they take in consideration how much they get. Um, sure. Once they pick, you know, whatever they want, then it's, you know, it's always smooth sailing from there. That's great. Yeah, that's so good to hear, and it's so wonderful to see how things have evolved, because that makes your job easier, and it makes yes. it easier for the for your clients, too. Yes. They know they're going to have a good uh, experience. Absolutely, because they don't have to be, you know, fearful. They just know it's going to be smooth, as in, I don't know, quote, unquote, a regular mm -hmm. wedding, as they say. You know, it's, it's just as smooth. Right. Yeah, that's incredible. So glad to hear that. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Any other comments or questions? Yes. I would say from a supplier standpoint, um, for clients that are transgender, it is it's become much easier to book them with the identity that they want to be identified as versus kind of that you have to check A or B. So that's that's changed a lot in the last six months even and seeing more and more suppliers opening up and That's really good to hear as well, yeah. And what kind of suppliers are you dealing with the most in terms of your, with your transgender clients? Uh, all of them. I've been on all inclusives. Mm -hmm. Airlines are probably the most um, difficult to deal with because it needs to be um, with the ID oh, or right. the, the passport, and sometimes that does not match with what they identify with. So that that becomes tricky, and so I think the airlines are, are getting better at being able to address that. So. Right. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's very good to hear as well. So, yeah, suppliers are across the board are definitely getting savvier yeah, yeah. about diversity. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Question. Yes. Do you find that there's destinations or suppliers that they want to open up for diversity because, of course, they see that there is a dollar amount to be made there, but their actual the destination or the actual um, is not as accepting as they're wanting to? You find. Right, that's a very good question. Yeah, yeah, because obviously, yeah, in terms of equality and discrimination, not every destination in the world is equal. Yeah, because legislation laws are different in, in different countries. So it's true. So you may have a hotel, for example, or a tour operator that's going to a destination where, but the destination itself is not particularly, you know, LGBTQ friendly, or it may even be illegal to be gay or be be queer or whatever in, in that destination. So yeah, that is something to keep in mind. And um, because as, as I mentioned during the presentation, yeah, the people need to feel safe no matter what their orientation or identity is. And so yeah, it's worth definitely worth researching and knowing what you're selling. And different travelers also have different com comfort levels. You know, like I think all of us who work in the travel industry, you know, we're used to traveling, we'll travel just about anywhere. But a client, you know, they 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 need to be more assured that they're going to feel comfortable. So so yeah, it's it's definitely worth noting if you're sending someone to to a destination, the hotel may be great, but you may need to tell them to be careful, or, or there may not be any LGBTQ nightlife or something like that for sure. Yes, yes, sir. Is there a website like Sherpa that you know tells what's open as far as COVID and all that stuff that has like a safety index for countries around the world? Is there like a wedding reference rather than you know? That's that's a good question. What I've used, and you know, I'm not sure if there's if there's one if there's one set website that's a good reference for in terms of you're asking about regarding safety for LGBTQ yeah. travelers. Um, I don't know. I need to research that because there should be. Maybe that's something I should start if there isn't. But um, thanks for the idea. Um, but what I have done, you know, it is pretty easy to, to Google and to research at least the laws in each country, whatever country you might be considering selling. So. 
Um, it's, def it's definitely a good idea to do that. I think, I think the battery guy used to do that in books. Yes. Used to, they used to be Spartacus, too. Yes, yeah. I remember the days of Spartacus and the old days before the internet. Yeah, yeah, you carry the giant heavy guidebooks. Yeah. It's worth definitely worth Googling and finding out what the specific laws are and regulations in, in any given country before you send somebody there. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. Yes, sir. There, there are about 70 countries where homosexuality is illegal. <laughs> That list that you're talking about, that is like the first Google item when you search it, and it gives you the list of the 70 countries that um, it's illegal. Yeah, that's the thing. Sometimes, since you know we're standing here talking about um, you know how things have progressed, but there still still are this large number of countries where it's just plain illegal, and so. Do you want to go? Do you want to go there? Or do you want to sell that to your client? It, that doesn't mean that it's, I've been to countries where where homosexuality is illegal, and I've had a, a wonderful trip. But it's not the same kind of trip that I have if I go to Puerto Vallarta, you know. So, so it is something that you need to be aware of, and that clients need to be aware of, obviously. So, yeah, research is always important. Yes. Most, most of the Caribbean countries are it's illegal, but they kind of like look the other way. But I mean, punishable by death. Right, yes. Yeah, there are destinations in the Caribbean, and especially in the English-speaking Caribbean. So, yeah, so it's definitely worth, yes, you need to, to research and also make sure that your clients feel comfortable and are informed about that, for sure. Anyone else? On a lighter note. On a lighter note, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because um, most of my clients are LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. um, I've just been around for a couple of years, so I'm growing. And I'm finding that you know, if I suggest, hey, I can book a trip to Puerto Vallarta, I say, oh no, I know Puerto Vallarta, I know how to get there, I know where to stay, I know all the food chairs and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. What uh, I am finding is more, they want to go to places where they haven't been, a more diverse places, Spain, Portugal, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool in a way, oh, not in a way, it's just it's kind of cool, that, you know, the, the proverbial gay destinations for gay people, San Francisco, Puerto Vallarta, New York, and all that stuff, they all know about. But right. it's the other stuff that you got to look at to sell. And, you know, That's a very good point. For, yeah, for those of you who, who didn't hear, even the, the gentleman was talking about how there are destinations that are like the, the traditional LGBTQ travel destinations like Puerto Vallarta, like San Francisco, like New York, that you know a lot of travelers, and especially gay travelers, they already know it well, so they don't necessarily need that much of your guidance if they're going to Puerto Vallarta, if they've been there 50 times or whatever, or to San Francisco. But there are they, a lot of people, they want, they're expanding their world, and, and they also realize there's friendly destinations everywhere. So they, they, they're open to, and they're really willing to, exploring new places. So that's, you know, like I said before about, you look at the top, the top destinations on the list, but look beyond that, because they really need your guidance even more if they're going to some place like, like Portugal, or like Louisville, or, you know, or like, like South Korea or something, you know, where they can have great experiences and be welcomed, but, it's not like Puerto Vallarta where, you know, they already know every single bar or, you know, the, the, the gay beach there or whatever. So I think that can be a really good, really good opportunity for, for travel advisors for sure to, to go beyond because people, you know, people are looking for, for new experiences always to explore the world. Yes, yeah, so that's a very good point. I'm sending a couple of clients to Asheville, North Carolina, the Smoky Mountains to watch the leaves. To Asheville, yes, and you know, I haven't been to Asheville, but I know that's like a hot and hip destination, so yeah, yeah, so places like Asheville, for sure, for sure. This is why I wanted to make it interactive, because we all share and we all learn that way. But I will bring this to a close, but I'll thank you so much, so much for joining me today, and it's been a good and uh, feel free to stop by up here afterwards if you want to say hi or exchange business cards or whatever, so thanks again.